Hello everyone, my name is Edgar de los Santos. I am part of the technical support team here at Midas. Uh, if you can hear me, can you please press the button with the hand? Alright, perfect. Thank you. Uh, today we're going to have a session regarding the soil structure interaction in bridges. This is the third session of our substructure training series. The first one was about the 3D substructure analysis and design. Uh, we separated the substructure into just, and we analyzed it as an individual part of the entire structure. We also went over the design features in the program in the first session. Then in the second session, we had the combined the superstructure and the substructure, and we did like an all-in-one uh, model in which we merge uh, the two parts of the structure and then we did uh, the design of it and now we're going to talk about the essential uh, soil structure interaction for bridges here we're going to go over what soil structure interaction is the types of analyses that are, are related to it the modeling functions that uh, we have available in the program and also uh, we're going to see how we're going to apply those modeling functions and then we uh, can check some of the results that are available in Midas Civil. After that, we're gonna go over the design features in the program. First of all, I would like to introduce you to the what Midas Civil is, um, and then we're gonna go over the substructure part. Midas Civil is an all-in-one solution. Uh, it's a structural analysis program that can handle any type of bridges. You can go from the very simple slab bridge to the most complex suspension cable state bridge out there. Uh, you can also handle any type of analysis in the program. Uh, you can do any type of analysis is available. As you can see here, you can go from st uh, static. Uh, you can perform nonlinear dynamic analysis, and uh, you can also do the design of the entire bridge. So it's an all-in-one solution for uh, bridge analysis and design. Let me just go over the what soil structure int interaction is. So uh, for those of you who do not know or have, are not familiar with what soil structure interaction, this is the phenomenon in which the response of soil and movement of the structure influence each other. So let's say when an external for force such an earthquake acts on the system uh, neither the structural displacement nor the ground displacement are independent of each other. So one influences the behavior of the other. Uh, the, the study of this behavior is what soil structure interaction is. Uh, in soil structure interaction is, is the way in which the soil interacts uh, with the structure itself. As you know, every structure has a, a load transfer system to the ground. Uh, the, that the amount of load that is transferred uh, depends on the location of the foundation, the flexibility of the foundation, and the soil behavior on which the, the, the structure is supported on. So the study of this combination is very important so that you can have an idea of what the behavior of the entire structure will be with the simulation of the soil properties in it. You can get displacements, moments, load distribution, and see what the behavior of the entire structure will be. Regarding the types of analysis, there are two methods of analyzing the soil structure or of performing the soil structure interaction. One is the substructure method and the other one is the direct method. The substructure method is based on superposition of events, so it separates the problem into two parts. Free field analysis in which the response of the soil, uh, this is, or the reactions are obtained. This is where the structure um, you know where the structure will be, those reac reactions from the soil are taken. The other part is the structure analysis portion. Here the soil is modeled with uh, dampers, spring dampers. And then from there you design the structure with the idealization of the soil um, properties. This is a more uh, practical method for structural engineers. We don't have to go into much of details of the soil properties since uh, it's just an easier way of performing the analysis considering the soil. You also have the direct method in which uh, 
the soil structure system the entire thing is modeled and analyzed in one step you can get the response of the soil with the structure simultaneously and there are two methods uh, numerical methods to perform this type of analysis is FEM and FDM uh, and it, it is very good or very less complicated for um, geotech engineers but it's, it's a little too complex for structural engineers because it can be very difficult the input of the information the parameters that need to include it it is a more detailed soil geotechnical uh, methodology of performing the social structure interaction so we're gonna stick with the very simple one so let's say that we have a peer a lot of engineers tend to analyze a peer just by fixing the where the foundation will be let's say it doesn't move in the x y or z or it doesn't rotate we analyze the entire structure assuming that it does not this is probably not the best way of analyzing since you know there is some type of flexibility when you consider the piles or when you can consider the pile caps or the entire foundation which will you know influence the behavior of the entire structure so let's say you know the peer reaction it will depend absolutely on the soil and the foundation type that it, it is uh, supported on so in this case we have the same peer and we can obtain two different results from these particular peers since one of them is cons considers the piles and the pile caps and the other one does not the force result on the deck and the pier depends on whether the flex the foundation is flexible or not or whether it is considered or not so this is something that we have to take into consideration even though you know trying to do the or trying to perform the the simple um, method of, of doing the analysis is something that is acceptable does not necessarily mean that is the proper way of doing it let me just go over some of the modeling functions that we have available in the program uh, so that you can have an idea of how or, or which properties you can assign to the uh, bridge to consider the soil interaction uh, we have some boundary conditions. I'll be going over the boundary conditions because these are very important when considering the soils or when considering the the whole foundation substructure por portion of the uh, bridge. Um, in this case, we have multiple types of boundary conditions. We have nodal boundary conditions, element boundary conditions. In this case, we're going to focus a little bit more on the nodal part parts. Uh, we have the constraints, which is the support part in which we can constrain the degrees of freedom of a particular node, either translation or rotation. Uh, we also have elastic boundary con uh, uh, conditions, which are the uh, spring supports. We can do point spring supports, surface spring supports, general spring supports. Uh, we're going to see some of the application of these uh, properties into a uh, uh, model. We also have elastic link elements and general links, and these are for uh, defining types, things such as bearings or isolators, dampers, and so on. Uh, the three main things that we're going to focus today are the spring supports, specifically. Uh, in the program, we have point spring supports in which uh, you can define the stiffness in XYZ or the rotational stiffness of the soil. You can get that information from the geotech. Uh, you can get the model subgrade reaction and just apply it directly into the model. We also have the surface spring support. So let's say you have a beam foundation or you have a, a slab, uh, a mat slab. You can assign the soil properties into the slab without having to, you know, go too much into detail um, for the geotech uh, portion, just with the subgrade reaction, for example. Uh, and then we have the element boundary conditions in when we can do the beam releases in which we release the different degrees of freedom of an element. Uh, we can also do a rigid link uh, in which you know it connects rigidly uh, two nodes. This is the boundary part for the elements. And these are some of the boundary conditions uh, such as the links. Uh, we have the elastic link for a bridge. 
is basically the separation between or, or the d um, device that separates the uh, superstructure from the substructure. We talked about it uh, in the previous sessions. Uh, but then here you can define it the stiffness in X, Y, Z, uh, translational and rotational. We also have the compression only elastic link. This is a lot of uh, most of the times used for uh, modeling the soil, uh, but we also, as we know, you know, uh, soil cannot take any um, tension. We also have uh, compression only uh, properties for the links, and then we have the rigid. Uh, we also have the rigid link that connects uh, two nodes with infinite stiffness, and we also have the multilinear one. So if you have, let's say, a py curve, you can insert it here, and then you can use that for your soil properties. Uh, in the general link part, specifically, we have different types of devices that we can simulate in the program. We have dampers, isolators, compression-only elements, tension-only uh, plastic hinges, and soil springs. We can use linear, non-linear elements to do this type of um, uh, to use these devices. Uh, we have for the element type the spring dash pad and spring and dash pad and then for the force type we have the viscoelastic damper hysteric system seismic isolators we have friction pendulum triple uh, friction pendulum lead rubber bearing isolator so you know these are things that you can you know just do for your information it is uh, those are available in the program then we have the surface uh, spring supports. These are used to define elastic supports on surfaces, represented by the modules of spring. So you get the the subgrade reactions from your soil. You get to talk to the geotech guy, and then from there you can obtain the the program can distribute the uh, soil springs throughout the entire surface. It can do, do two types. It can perform the convert to nodal spring in which the uh, spring supports are assigned to the nodes or you can do the distributed spring in which the spring is uh, assigned to the entire element. It can be a plate, it can be a frame element if you have, uh, you know, as I said, a mass foundation, a beam uh, foundation, you can assign the uh, or distribute the soil properties throughout the entire element. Within the uh, prop, uh, soil or functions that are available in the program, we also have something called integral bridge spring supports, which is a function that I'm going to show you today so that you can have an idea of how to apply those particular properties into an integral bridge. An integral bridge is one in which the uh, the deck and its supporting abutments and piers are integrated with our expansion joints to absorb the deformation of the bridge. Uh, just it, it uses the flexibility of the abutment and piers to as, uh, absorb that expansion. The the main concern in these particular bridges is that the effect of the temperature variation on the deformation of the deck. Uh, influences the entire behavior of the structure. Uh, this expansion and contraction of the bridge affects the backfield soil adjacent uh, to the abutment and also the compaction affects the behavior of the bridge. This back and forth between uh, with those changes or variations of temperature have an entire effect of the on the bridge and also influences the behavior of the soil. So we have defined in the program, or we have generated a function in which the engineers can define the properties of the, you know, the longitude, the length of the of the deck, the properties of the abutments, and then the program will calculate the spring properties throughout the entire abutment and will assign them automatically. This is the function in the program. It's called Integral Bridge uh, Spring Supports. And it, 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 what it does is that it applies the uh, spring uh, properties automatically in the program. You should just insert the soil properties and then the, the springs are assigned automatically by the program. There are two types of uh, springs when you use the abutment function 
or the uh, abutment spring, which is this one right here. One is the compression only to model the passive um, support by the backfill, and the other one is the footing, in which the supports are applied to the abutment in the direction of gravity. The other function that we have available is the pile spring, and here the soil properties are also applied automatically in the program or by the program you just have to insert the soil properties in it. Um, what it does is it, it generates two types of springs one that is the lateral restriction to model the lateral restraint of the soil in the piles and the vertical springs uh, that is to model the vertical stiffness you know adjacent to the piles these are some of the properties that are required to define these type of um, uh, spring supports. Uh, you have multiple types of soil. You have sand, clay, stiff clay, soft clay. Depending on the type of soil, you can see how the program calculates its each behavior. If you, for example, want to see how the program is calculating the behavior of the sand, you can go into the online manual. You press F1 when you have the program open, and then you hit Start, Boundaries, and then you go to the Spring Supports function. Here we have the Integral Bridge Spring Support, and from here you can see a description of what the function is the parameters that are required by the program and then the computation of the stiffness for the abutments you can have all the equations that the program uses to perform the or to assign the soil properties and then if you have let's say if you select um, some type of uh, let's say sand the program shows you the calculation that it uses in case of using you know sand or uh, clay. When you use clay the program also tells you which equations are using for the calculation of the spring stiffness for the clays. So just in case you know this is not a black box the program is telling you how you how the program is calculating uh, the, the entire stiffness of each one of the springs. In case that you want to use the automatic uh, function you can use this one or you can talk to your geotech guy and ask him, you know, just give me the to provide you the the stiffness of each one of the springs for each each layer or each location or each um, depth on your uh, bridge, and then he'll be able to provide you with that information. And you just can input it manually in the program. You can use it. You can input it through tables. You can input it through. Um, our uh, graphical user interface but then you know you have the automatic version in the program so you might as well use it if your geotech guy is, uh, agrees with it so here are some of the parameters that the program uh, uses for defining the uh, spring properties such as ground level the sea coordinates of the ground the pile diameter the unit weight of the soil the earth uh, pressure coefficient at rest, uh, the coefficient of subgrade reaction, the internal friction angle, initial modulus. Uh, these are the things that the program uses to calculate the soil stiffness and this is what you need to input in the program. So I'm going to go over a model that we have and uh, that is also available for the users in which we're going to apply the soil properties into the abutments and piles and see how the behavior of the soil influences the behavior of the bridge. So let me just go to the Mida Civil. And here we have our model. This is an skewed bridge with the um, integral portion, the abutments are defined already in the program. For those of you who do not uh, know what how my decibel looks like, this is our graphical user interface. We have at the top the ribbon menu that is very similar to AutoCAD, Microsoft Office. We have generated this version 
of the program or this this part uh, just thinking about how our users can it's, it can be how easily to the users to uh, utilize our program we have in the review menu we have the different tabs in which each one of the uh, tabs indicates us the different functions that are available so let's say for the load tab you have the different types of loading static dynamic moving load temperature loading construction stage loading all of them are uh, listed and then from there you go from left to right to define the load cases and then apply the loading this is how the workflow of the program is everything is from left to right so you will not have any issues while modeling uh, inside of it we also have the tree menu which is this part right here in the tree menu we have something called tables in which all the things that are assigned to the model are listed you can generate a table for you know all the properties that are on in the model and you can modify that table for example the nodes you can modify the coordinates via Excel or just by inputting the nodes or location of each node right here the same thing you have for all the parts of the structure we also have the works tree in which um, you can generate the or you can see the list of things that are assigned into the model here I use this a lot because I, I can see what our users input in their models and for example if you have an issue we are the technical support guys that check your models and see what what's happening to it and from here I can see whatever you have added to the model and I can check it I can even check the properties that you have assigned and modifying them my, uh, also from here so it's a very useful function which is the works tree then we have the groups we have different groups assigned this model has also uh, construction stages and you know we have different things here task pane we have created a tax pane function for you guys that uh, is gonna list all the properties that are or all the steps that are assigned into this model so let's say I would like to locate an old um, tax pain pro, um, function that we had available. It's right here. Let me see right here. Let me use the user define one that we have created and then from here you can see the different functions that are available for you these are the steps that you can use for defining the uh, or assigning the properties so let's say I would like to assign the spring supports I hit on the spring supports and the program is going to redirect me to integral bridge function through the tax pane we generated this tax pane so it will be easier for you to just you know click here click on the spring supports the supports perform the analysis and then verify the different results just from the tax pane so you have to go through you know the main menu you can do this type of little program uh, if you guys follow like different steps constantly you can also do that in the program all right and then you have the message window in which the program you know communicates with you and tells you whether there is a problem with the model or not and then we have the different views right here that we can change um, in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the boundary tab and I'm gonna use the integral bridge function you can also load it through the tax pane and then from here I'm gonna assign these uh, springs supports into a group of supports and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to activate the second tree menu and I'm just gonna activate the substructure I can just right click on it and activate it so I can only see that part from here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the units to keep inches and then I'm gonna select from the element list function I'm going to select the elements that I'm gonna assign into the uh, abutments so I can just click on this abutment part and then from there I am going to select or delete the nodes that do not belong to this uh, portion of uh, the assignment 
in this case the program asks us for the uh, node list if you want to delete the nodes just click here and erase them and press the enter uh, button and then from here or the enter key I'm sorry from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the uh, nodes for the footing the nodes for the footing are the nodes that are assigned at the bottom of the abutment which are this one then from here I'm going to define the height of the abutment the width of the abutment and the deck uh, length obviously this is these parameters are going to change as uh, you know for the different uh, projects then we have the specific gravity the void ratio and then from here uh, let's apply the differential temperature of the deck and then from here we will apply the foundation width and the bearing pressure here the alpha is gonna be using the uh, properties of the material and then from here what we'll do is we're gonna click apply and the program is gonna do this one it's going to apply a uh, spring support each one of the spring supports is generated via the or, or is shown using the hexagon XYZ on the right XYZ rotation on the left part translation on the right part so in this case we have X and Y translation which are the um, horizontal uh, degrees of freedom so it's restraining it laterally and then in this part we can see that it has X Y and C so the vertical portion is taken into consideration for this one and also the rotation in the Y direction we're going to do the same for the other abutment in this case we're just gonna select it the same way and then we're going to reselect the nodes so let me just erase this click enter or press the enter key and then I'm going to select the nodes that are listed just unselect this one and let me just reselect this one right here alright perfect after that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to we have the information of the abutment uh, already defined so let's just click apply let me see let me just check the that the information was applied pro uh, correctly let me just display all the spring supports right we have the spring supports on the left side let me just redo it on the right side all right let's select again the abutment and let's select the nodes alright and then here we go we have the springs assigned to the abutment and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign the uh, pile uh, the springs for the piles in order for us to apply the springs on the piles 
the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select uh, the boundary functions and we're going to go ahead and define the piles um, select the pile nodes so we're going to do something like this in which we select the piles and then we're going to use the pile spring function which is this one from here we can tell the program the type of soil that we're using in this case let's use sand the um, ground level the diameters of uh, the piles it's 18 inches in this case and then from there we can define the earth pressure the subgrade reaction coefficient and then we can simply just apply it from here the problem what it's gonna do is it's gonna assign the um, spring supports in these directions also in this case what we're going to do is we're going to define the uh, springs uh, the supports on this model they are defined right here we're going to also define the supports at the bottom of the uh, nodes of the piles just to have a vertical restriction you can either do this or just uh, use the vertical restriction that ge is generated from the piles so let's define the supports and restrain it in the C direction or in this case you can just restrain this portion of the wind and then uh, just run the model with the soil um, springs uh, vertical C direction it's up to you let's just do it that way uh, let me see if all the groups you can check if all the tables belong if the all the springs properties you can check them through the table and you can also uh, modify the um, properties through the table and here I'm checking also that all of the spring supports belong to the group because when I run this model now uh, they all will be activated in the construction stage in which they are assigned to be um, activated so let me just run this one and let's go back into the property alright after we run this model we're going to check the different um, results are, are generated for, for our, uh, assigning the spring properties we can check the stresses on the plates for the abutments we can also check the stresses in the piles uh, due to the spring consideration and also see how the entire behavior of the uh, entire bridge is uh, during the construction stages and also uh, after applying the different types of loads such as the temperature, the moving load, um, dead load, life load, barrier loads all the loads are considered and then we can check how the behavior of the bridge is when we consider um, the entire um, uh, spring supports right so the program tells us you know if there is anything uh, wrong during the analysis the program will tell us and then from there we can check now the results of the um, functions the, let's check let's see some of the reactions so let's just run into the tax pane and let's check the reactions uh, we can see the reactions due to the um, self-weight we can check the reaction on each one of the piles um, let me just reduce the scale of the arrows so that we can have a smaller one we can also add the values here so you can have an idea of what the you know each one of the reactions that are generated in the model 
Also for deformations you can obtain the deformed shape of the bridge due to its self weight. You know it's a very deformed um, way of showing it. You can also check the beam forces that are generated due to that um, particular load case. In this case the self weight. Let's check the reactions of the foundation. So here you can have an idea of what the values are for the reactions of the foundation. Let me just uh, fix the figures on the legend and let me change the properties of the legend. So if you change let's say to moment and you change the units the program automatically updates the units. So let's say keep inches, the program will change it to keep inches automatically okay. without any um, issue. Also if you want to check the forces on the abutments, we have the plate forces and moments and then from here let's check the forces due to the temperature gradient that are generated on the piles, I mean on the abutments, I'm sorry. You can see here the moment generated in the abutments um, and the effect that the temperature has on the abutments uh, directly. So this is a way of assigning soil springs for a uh, particular um, integral bridge or just for piles in the program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the other model that we have created in which we're going to show you how to define the or how to um, uh, define the piles in the model and also how to define the slab in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign uh, two uh, foundations, two piles to each one of the columns or piers in this case and also we're going to mesh the pile cap so you can have an idea of how uh, you can do it and we're going to use the surface spring so that you can see how you can assign it into the pile caps. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these two nodes, I'm going to activate them and then from the two nodes what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me just show them to generate the location of the two uh, piles for each uh, column and then I'm going to show you how to mesh it. So in this case I'm going to select the two nodes and I'm going to use the translate function. I'm going to translate these two nodes at an, uh, 2.2 meters to the in the y direction and also minus 2.2 in the other direction. Then from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the nodes in which I'm just going to generate a circle that is going to be um, you know what the pile will look like. In this case I'm going to do it uh, 10 times 360 degrees over 11 and about the C axis which will be the C the vertical direction in this node and what I'm going to do is oh, I'm sorry uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to translate this node 0 0.0, uh, 0.75 meters in the X direction and then this node that I just created I'm going to do the rotation of it so it's going to be 10 times 360 over 11 and then I'm going to use this location as a reference the translation. After I apply it, this is what is going to be generated. I generated a circle with a 1.5 meters diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select those new elements and also the node that I recently created and I'm going to translate it. So I'm going to translate it from the center to this part, apply it, select it again from the center to the other side of the bridge and redo it for the other part. Perfect. From there what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this node and I'm going to translate it to generate the pile cap. So in this case 
what it's gonna do is I'm gonna do two meters comma four meters and it's gonna assign it here I'm gonna do the same node but I'm just gonna do minus four to assign it on the opposite side and then I'm gonna do minus two for the other side perfect we have the entire you know um, location of the pile cap um, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the interior nodes and I'm going to generate the piles for this particular model so let me see if I have the section I'm gonna create a section for the piles so I go to the section properties I add a new one and this one is gonna have a 1.5 diameter click OK and then we have it defined what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude the element and generate the piles from those nodes I use the extrude function I'm gonna assign the peer section to it and I am going to assign the di uh, the peer uh, material I'm sorry and the pile section to it it's gonna be minus one and it's gonna be a seven meter pile if we apply it we're gonna have something like this these are the piles generated then from there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mesh or first translate these four nodes and then generate a mesh on each side of the um, bridge so let me first translate these nodes and we're gonna go from here to here and then we're gonna use the auto mesh function in which we can select either nodes, lines, element, line elements or planar elements in this case we have nodes so we're gonna select the area that we wanna mesh we can include or not the inner domain which is the inner nodes uh, the interior nodes also and then we can tell the program what the length or the size of the mesh is so let's generate the material for the pier and let's assign a thickness to it we're gonna do a 2 meter pile cap and then from there we can apply it and this is generated right here the same thing we can do for the other side of the bridge in which we can select the four nodes and then from there we can just apply it and it's gonna be something like this if we activate the entire bridge we're gonna have something like this in where we have the piles with its cap so in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the plates and I'm gonna show you how you can assign the spring supports into the plate so let me show you the surface spring function the surface spring converts the uh, springs into nodal loads or it's gonna assign it to the nodes or you can also distribute it so let's say if you have a beam in the foundation you can tell the program what the width of the beam is and the program is gonna distribute the load or the nodes into the beam in this case we have a plane which is the pile caps so in this case we're gonna tell the program what the subgrade reaction is for that particular um, pier. So we have it there. Then, if you see here, the program assigns the uh, pile, the pier caps, that it assigns the springs distributed throughout the entire um, cap. After that, we have the um, assignment of the spring supports so let's assign the pile springs into those um, elements and let's say for the piles that we recently generated we're gonna assign the spring supports we select them these, these piles we tell the program where the location of the ground is the diameter of the pile, the subgrade reaction, and we hit apply. 
we have the location here. Same thing for the piles on the side of the bridge. Let's just rotate it here. And let's tell the program where the ground level is in this case. Perfect. After that, if you want to assign some type of restriction into the um, piles or if you want to assign any other uh, thing to the model, you can do it as well. Let me just check here the links. That everything is fine. Here we have the links. Let me just assign it. Also, in this case, we have this model with links that are supporting the deck. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the links, these two nodes, and I'm going to translate them. And I'm going to tell the program to assign the properties or the node attributes to those particular nodes that I'm going to translate. So here I have the devices that are supporting the deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the program to translate, to copy these two devices into the other side of the bridge and copy the node attributes. You can copy the links that are assigned to the nodes or anything that is assigned to the nodes and intersect the frame. The same thing we're gonna do with the other side because the right side of the columns do not have the spring supports in them. We apply them and then after that we can check whether or not the springs have been assigned. So we had four springs, I mean six, now we have eight. And then we do a merge of the nodes so to make sure that all the nodes are um, together we do the merge we select everything and then from there we can run the model now let's just go back then from here uh, we're gonna check the analysis results in the program and see what we can get from the um, spring supports uh, assigned into the bridge. All right, so let's see what the deformation will be due to the particular, let's say, dead load. Let's change the units to inches and let's fix the legend to see what the behavior of the bridge will be. You can deform the bridge, and here we can see what the deformation will be due to the particular um, load case. If you have a moving load as well, since this model has the moving load, you can select the minimum and maximum moving load and see what the behavior of the bridge will be for that particular load case. You can also check the uh, pile reactions or the forces on the piles as I did in the previous model you can check them here and you can see you know there's a significant amount of piles that is taken from this particular part what we did in this case we applied the nodes into the pile cap because we want to, the pile cap to consider the soil that is supported on but if you don't want to if you just want the piles to assume all the loading you just simply disregard the, the pile cap and don't apply any spring supports to it. In this case, we have applied them to both of them. Uh, so we can also check the forces that are being generated on the pile um, caps. So I'm just going to activate the pile cap on the right side, so that on the left side, I'm sorry, so that we can have an idea of what is happening in it. So let's say for the moving load, Let's check what the behavior of the pile cap will be. We have concentration of loading on the, you know, the piles location, but then we also have different moments or 
shear forces that are assigned into the pile. So from these uh, forces, we can perform the design uh, based on what the stresses that are generated on the piles. If you have an Excel sheet, you can perform the design of it through an Excel sheet. But the main thing is getting the force results and this is what the program can do. If you want to check the results of, let's say, this element 182, you can get the forces using this box here and you can tell the program which load case you want to check and the program is going to give you the forces that are being generated due to those particular load cases. You can export that to your Excel sheet and then you can perform the design of these um, um, pile cap. After this we're going to see a little bit of let's check we're going to see a little bit of the uh, design as per Ashto. In the program we have the Ashto LRFD available for design of the soft structure. We can perform the design, we can get um, design outputs like this one graphically. The program can show us what the behavior of the um, structure will be with particular reinforcement, also the ratios, capacity over um, demand and it will show also generate an, a report in which all the equations that is, are being used the program will explain them. Also the PM interaction curve in 3D and we can use the design function as per Ashto to generate the design of the bridge. In this case what we're going to do is I'm going to go over the design functions. Uh, you can select the Ashto RFD in under the design codes you can apply the seismic provision of as per Ashto and then we have a function in the program in which you can also modify the strength reduction factors you know in the case that you need to or just want to check something uh, you can also modify the material for the design so in this case we have the ASTM available in the program as well as uh, the rebar information you can modify it here after that we have the limiting of the rebar um, ratio as per Ashto as well and we have the information for the design so in the program we have the column section for design in which we can tell the program how much or we can tell the program the current thickness that we need that we have and the number of spirals that we have in this case we have P I'm just gonna change it to the regular number of rebar if you wanna do that go to tools preferences and do the design and load case function and here for material for rebar you can select the ASTM materials for DB and then we can define it and select the rebar as per ASTM. So let's do the design first. We have the column section data for design in which we can tell the program what the thickness is and then we can also tell the program which rebars to use and the number. I replace then from there the program can do the design of the piles from the load combinations. The first thing that you have to do before performing the design is generate the load combination under the concrete design tab. You can use the auto generation as per Ashto and the program will generate them automatically. Then from there you can perform the design for these uh, piles. So after defining the design functions you can do column design and then from there the program is going to take the load combinations and it's going to perform the design of the piles. It's going to tell us whether or not it complies with the codes and it's going to give us like an overall or general uh, idea of the design of these piles. It's going to provide us with the rebar information. It's going to give us also the capacity, actual force, moment capacity and also the interaction diagram. 
and as well it's going to provide us with the shear reinforcement with the stirrups, the spacing of the stirrups here it's going to give us the river information with those stirrups that we assigned to it that's a way of doing it uh, if you want to check by member you can also check by member individually you can get a detailed um, report on each one of the equations that the program used for design load combinations, information of the elements uh, that you're designing, the moment capacity, slenderness ratios, um, shear checks. You can also generate a PM curve for the design, as I mentioned. And you can also use a summary. You can generate a summary of the uh, design that you just performed. That's one way of doing it. The other way of the other function that is available for design is the, the design check. So let's say we have the column section data for checking and we have number three bars every let's say 10 inches or every 6 inches and we tell the program that we have 12 free bars that are number 8 at 6 inches from the um, clear cover 6 inches if we want to add more we can add more and the program automatically updates the drawing so from there we can tell the program alright so can you do the design check and see whether or not this reinforcement complies with the code so the program now is doing the code check with the parameters that we just inserted and it's gonna give us something like this in which the program tells us you know the rebar information the capacity of the um, that particular reinforcement and also the shear capacity and from there you can also generate the PM curve you can also do the member design you can generate the graphical part the detailed report as I just did with the design but this in this case is the check so you can see what the program is checking in each one of the parameters in the Ashto whether you want to save it or not you can do it again these are the some of the functions that are available for the pile design and with this um, particular session uh, we were able to see what the program can do in terms of the definition of the soil spring supports we also saw some of the uh, functions that are, are available for piles, abutments, surface springs it's basically most of the things that are available for applying the soil properties in the model um, how easy it is to perform a more complete analysis and also we saw some of the uh, design functions that are available that you can all do them in the same platform which is Mida Civil. Thank you all for your um, attention and for your time in attending this training. If you guys have any further questions you can uh, use our global technical uh, support uh, website uh, and here we provide the support to the entire world uh, so any questions that you have you can just uh, insert it into global support at midasuser.com thank you very much for your attention my name is Edgar de los Santos and I hope you have a great rest of the day